Greg from Balloon Market here and welcome to BMTV and as you can see we are once again joined by the wonderful Ellen from Silhouette UK. Ellen, hello. Hi, how are you, UK? I'm all right. Nice to meet you, actually, I physically, know, I know. face to face. It's yeah, lovely. Yeah, it is great. So, great um, last time, obviously, we did a show, we did it over the internet, and you showed us actually how to put vinyl onto a balloon, and that's something that people that are watching do quite a lot of. It's yeah. very, very popular. This time, you're going to go into a bit more technical detail, aren't you? Yeah. So, you're going to tell us a little bit about the the blades, the cutting mats, how you use them, what blades you use to do what, and hopefully I will try and ask some relevant questions. So <laughs> over to you, tell us tell us what we're going to do. Okay, so um, yeah, we spoke about the Cameo 4 last time, yep. so I'm just going to go in a bit more depth about using different blades, because okay. as you can see, there's two different carriages. Okay. So on, um, on the blades, there's different numbers, one and two, so I'm just going to run through what those mean, what materials that you can use with them, um, and then if you've got any questions, yeah, just... I've got a question. Go on. So why are there two carriages? So the reason why there's two carriages, you've got two, um, carriage one, which is for um, cutting out in speed. So if you're sending out jobs, it's a quick process. For carriage two, it's got more force in there, so you can cut thicker material. So You know what, I think you've told me that before. So I, I, I apologize. <laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, you've got more force into um, till carriage two, so um, it's a more of a slow process. You send the jobs through multiple times, increasing force. So there's yeah, there's different tools for bespoke jobs as and such. If I remember rightly, this has got quite a lot of downforce on oh, it, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. It's got um, much more um, force compared to other previous models. Um, so it's got up to um, one kilogram of force. So it's, you know, it is very powerful. Yeah, yeah. yeah a okay. very powerful machine. Cool. I like the way it lights up as well. I didn't realise yeah, that. Yeah, LED. That's very nice. <laughs> very snazzy. Okay. Um, so with the Cameo 4, you get um, some tool adapters. Mm -hmm. So there's four different colours. Yeah. So Silhouette have these. So with previous models, there's been different tools so with the new version there's an auto detect function yeah so it's just a sensor on the back of the tools so when you pop it into the machine in the software it will automatically read what type ah. of blade you've got in so, so you so you've got the same blade but you just put these collars around it effectively. yeah yeah because they're different different sizes you see compared okay. to other other models yeah um so you need these adapters if you've got other blades that you've used previously to fit this machine okay I see. um so yeah once you once you pop them into the the software would alert you saying if you're using an auto tech blade or whether you're using a premium blade it will it will help you while sending the job through so what you mentioned those blades there i don't know what you're talking about well we'll run honest. through we'll run okay, through we're gonna do that. all right good good so yes so these are the this is what comes with them so different colors reference different blades um, so we'll run through the blades now so you can understand which is which is which. So you buy a blade and you get these with it or when you, you buy those separately? No, the, when you buy the machine, I see. you'll get the adapter set All right. and an auto detect blade, which is currently in the machine just now. Okay. So that's what it comes with. Um, and then all the other blades that you can see here would be an like another alternative yeah, yeah. Um, accessory if you wanted to use that for different machines. Okay. Different, All right. um, jobs so if i just take this out this is the auto detect blade it's got mm. a number one on it so that references to tool carriage one okay um if you look at ones over here they've got two so that again helps you that it goes into your to your head too so that again is nice and easy to I'm, remember. I'm, I'm, I'm with you so far this is good <laughs> it's not too technical then <laughs> <laughs> um auto detect blade basically means that it will automatically um tap the blade depth within the software. Okay. So when you send a job through, um, in the software, it would be blade one, blade two. That's just the length of okay. the blade that's, that's been revealed. So once you send the job through, you hear a clicking, and that's just the blade clicking to that blade depth. So how does it know? In the software, in the software. How does so it know? Would... How, how, so it, it actually goes through whatever material you're cutting. Yeah. And it knows when it's reached the bottom effectively. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in the software, which again, we can run through yeah. to show you, um, you have a settings. So yeah. in there, you can set the blade force and the blade depth that you have and also the speed. Mm -hmm. So you just manually adjust that yeah, in yeah. the software and then yeah. send it through to the machine and it will pick up the blade that it, the depth that it should be at and then send, you know, perform the cut. Um, there is pre-cut settings, which I think I may have, you know, mentioned before yeah, have, in yeah, yeah. the in the settings itself with the materials. So, Silhouette have their own final range. So there is default settings in that final. Oh, I see. So you set the settings in the software, and then that is just detecting 
what it is you set it at. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, it's okay. just reading the software. It's just the communication. So it's not actually physically detecting like, okay, this is the end of. No, no, no. It's not reading the thickness of the material. It's just whatever you've told it to do, it's going to go ahead okay. and perform, right. um, perform that. So that's and that's an auto blade. Mm -hmm. Then you have the one mil ratchet blade. That's a very similar product to the auto detect blade, but with a ratchet blade, you can adjust the blade itself. Okay. So when you pop it in, it's not going to click into place and find the right blade depth each okay. time. Um, it's just going to go from what you've set it as. Okay. Um, so why would you use that one? So that's more durable. That would be more. That's got a bigger lifespan than what an auto blade has. Because if you're sending, if you're cutting out vinyl, you know, sending like ten jobs um, a day, maybe mm -hmm. more, um, it will every time you send a job, it will click into place, and that can wear the blade down. I see. Okay. Um, so if you're if you've manually adjusted that to the right blade depth, um, it will just cut the job as you've set it. It won't tap. It won't. Okay. It'll just go. So if you were just using vinyl all the time, say for balloons, mm -hmm. just normal standard vinyl, and you knew it was setting whatever, your ratchet blade would probably be quite a good investment because that's going to last you longer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then so that's the one mil. Then you have a two mil. So again, that's also a ratchet blade. So the ratchet blade is just you can adjust just, it yourself. You just manually adjust yeah. the actual blade. So, yeah. So yeah. if you ever hear the terminology ratchet blade, it's just a you know, manually adjusted blade okay. that you can right. change. And that cuts um, a, th a slightly thicker. Yeah. So with the one mil, it's up to one mil of blade. So you can cut you know, thickness of that. Mm. Two mil um, is, it can cut up to two mil thickness. And what's vinyl? Vinyl's just like... Very thin. Yeah. Very, very it's thin. It's not even a millimetre no. close to it. So. No. I mean... With the auto detect and the ratchet blade, you're you're looking at cutting standard adhesive vinyl, heat transfer vinyl, mm -hmm. sticker paper. Yeah. Then the ratchet, the two mil ratchet blade, um, you're looking at more thicker materials, only slightly thicker. So if you were cutting out glitter, yeah, that's slightly thicker. Glitter, glitter vinyl. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. So you know that pigments. Oh, you mean glitter, glitter, glitter vinyl. Okay. <laughs> that would be a nightmare to yeah. cut. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so the glitter vinyl. There's also a vinyl which is called a flock vinyl. So it's like a, a furry effect. Yeah. So if you were to cut that slightly thicker again, so that'd be more Ooh, easy to cut, have to have cut a through. Look at that. Yeah. Um, so those are the one mil and the two mil. Mm -hmm. Then we move on to, to the premium blade. Okay. So this is out of the box. So I can show you a bit closer how you would adjust the blade. So you've got a, n a range of numbers, one to ten. Yeah. So that's how far the blade would come out. You'd just, you know, twist it mm -hmm. to the r number that you think it will cut. Mm -hmm. um, and then once you've, say, if you want it at, at depth of two, mm -hmm. you'd then put one of these collars over the, mach over the blade in there like that. And you close it just like that. Mm -hmm. You would then um, position. Position, I think is the word you're trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that into there, just like that. And okay. then once you're in the software, it will detect that blade. And then you can just send the job through again as you would. So what's the difference in that one and the blue one and the white one and the black one? Each one is referenced a different one. So the blue is for using a pen. So if you were having a sketch pen, okay. you pop one of the silhouette sketch pens into there and pop it in. Okay. Then you have the black, which is for any type of blade. Okay. Um, then you've got the grey, which is the deep cut blade, which is that one there, which we'll talk, to, talk about in okay. a minute. Um, and then the white is for um, a craft blade, which is um, an older version of the two more craft blade that Silhouette you, that have produced in the past. Okay. This is all new to me. This is, this, new. There's quite a lot to learn here. <laughs> yes. So the differences between a premium blade and a standard ratchet blade is, again, the, the blade material is different. It's a more premium product. Okay. So again, if you wanted to have a blade that's going to last longer again, your premium blade would be the, the, the blade okay. to choose from. Okay. And then you have the deep cut blade, which um, again is for cutting out your thicker materials. It's just got a bigger depth. So that might be cardboard or... Yeah, cardstock. Yeah. What's the thickest thing you can cut? 
it does vary. I mean, with the Cameo 4 now, you have the ability with, you know, Tool Carriage 2 to cut like balsa wood. Oh, like wow. Soft balsa wood. So again, with that, you would score the material yeah, yeah. Um, several times to then pierce it and, you know, then cut. So it does vary. Wow. It does. We've had okay. um, had leather cut through the Cameo 4. Really? Um, yeah, different types of, of cardstock, like thick That's quite a powerful stock. piece of equipment, though, yeah. isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah. It is very clever. So for... In our industry and all our viewers out there that do balloons in the main, what blade would be the best blade? So with the machine it comes with the auto blade, mm -hmm. that blade would be, you know, would suit. Okay. Um, if you're looking for um, a more l long du durability yeah. blade, I would look at the, the one, one mil ratchet, one okay. mil ratchet blade. That would um, last a little bit longer, but it is also hard to say how long the blade will last. It yeah. just depends on how often you would use it, yeah. what material that you're using. Yeah. If you're working with vinyl and then you're cutting out cardstock, you know you're you're putting it through its paces with yeah. changing, yeah, 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 um, yeah. you know, reeling the blade. So yeah, it does just depend on what you're using it for. Well, it's it's a replaceable item, isn't it? Yeah. Something that you kind of wear through eventually yeah. anyway. So. Yeah. What about these ones? We've not talked about these ones. Okay, so this is when you can get a bit more creative Ooh. with um, using the Cameo 4, um, which is completely exclusive to the, this machine. Yeah. You have um, three different tools, which is only three available um, at the moment. So if um, you are using vinyl, so stick to vinyl for now. Sometimes when you are cutting out vinyl in carriage number one, sometimes you peel it, like weeding it away, so taking away the material that we don't want, mm -hmm. it can be quite difficult to work out which part you need to pull away. Yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes, I know from you know personal experiences, um, I've weeded away the wrong part, um, so I had to restart again. All right. So with um, the punch tool, um, this basically just punches, just pierces um, the negative material that you want to you know, pull away. Oh, right. It just um, yeah, pierces that material so you know when you come to taking out the machine, you know where to weed away. That's clever, isn't it? Yeah, it is a good little um, little weeding hack. And yeah. which which head do you put that in? That'll go in number two. So okay. that'll just fit into there like that. And then it just it right automatically down. does that? You don't need to change any settings or anything? No, no, that's just a standard, standard setting. And again, um, that will pick up straight away in the software. Good, okay. Then we have the rotary blade. This is like a pizza cutter. Oh, um, yeah. On there, this is for cutting out fabrics, fabric material. We've had icing sheets, you know, icing sugar sheets, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. being cut out of it. Um, so it just cuts out, you know, large shapes, yeah. um, whether that's circles, um, squares. Um, you just have the ability to have a nice, nice clean cut. Yeah, cool. Then we have the three mil craft blade. So we spoke before about having a two mil craft blade. This is a three mil, so yeah. it's a three millimeter um, depth blade and um, a very powerful tool very sharp um, and again you can change it's a ratchet so you can change um, the different settings on so, there itself so what's what's the difference in a craft blade and a normal blade so the craft blade is more for your specific jobs um, unlike the the standard you know ratchet blade that's for your vinyl that's doing a job straight away nice and speedy quick you know what it's doing yeah whereas with tool carriage 2 it's more you know unique to what crafters want so whether that's you know cutting out your craft foam you got to send it through you know numerous times and um, to pierce the material and then it'll eventually you know cut through and um, so it does take a lot more more so time so that that looks like it's more of an actual like a scalpel blade yeah is that what you, why it is that yeah one? so that's actually cutting whereas are these blades just are they, are they the same? Are they similar? Are they... So there is different different blades. have di like The standard ratchet blade is a 45 degree angle. Then you've got the premium blade, which is like a 60 degree angle. Okay. So again, that just adds to the, the durability of, yeah. the, okay. of the blade. Um, so with this one, um, yeah, you would as such be scoring the material. So that's more specialist probably for yes. thicker stuff that yes. you're using in crafting. Yeah, you wouldn't want to use this for cutting vinyl out. No. It would just be a waste of, of you know your time when yeah. you know you've got tool carriage one and your blade's ready to go. So this is more for you, yeah, unique okay. jobs. All right, cool. Right, if we'll, we'll come onto the mats in a second. Okay, yeah. Is that everything to do with that yeah. that you can think of? Okay, if you've got any questions about blades, leave your comments down below on Facebook and YouTube, and I'm, I'm gonna get Ellen to answer them, so. <laughs> um, but yes, please leave us down, the, down below any comments you've got. Right, mats. Mm -hmm. Talk about mats, what should we do? Yes, so um, there is different mats 
Um, mm -hmm. They all do the same thing. Yeah. You would stick material to them and feed it into the machine. Um, with the Cameo 4, you have the ability, which I know I've mentioned before, is cutting with a mat and mm -hmm. cutting without a mat. Mm -hmm. So you used to only be able to cut, like die cut material with a cut mat okay. to protect the blade from damaging the machine. Whereas now, because the tool carriage is offset, you can now die cut without using a cutting mat. Okay. So now you're probably going to ask me, well, why would you need to use a cut mat now? Why would you need to use a cutting <laughs> mat now? Ellen? So now, if you were to want to use a cut mat, a lot of um, a lot of users have used a cut mat, you know, the whole time they've used the cameo. So they kind of they know it works and they want to carry on, you know, using a cut mat. Yeah. You have customers um, and users that have off cut materials. So instead of throwing it away, you can stick it to a cut mat, put it into the machine. Okay, so that's a good benefit then because you've got the grids on, on these, haven't you? So yeah. you just put your little bit of vinyl that you've got left that might just be that size. Yeah. It was an off cut and rather throwing it away, you're utilizing it. We're yeah. very good in this yeah. industry <laughs> using scraps of things. So we do it with 260Qs and balloons and it's it's brilliant. So, okay, that's that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so there is different tacks as well. Okay. So you, with the silhouette, especially, there's a low tack, standard tack and a high tack. If you're using like thinner materials, so if you're cutting out, you know, foil um, for any, any reason, you'd use a low tack because it's a thin material. Yeah. You don't want it to get stuck and tear yeah. that material away. Okay. Standard is the most popular. Is that this one? That's that one there. Okay. Um, which I can show you in a minute how you would position the media onto the cut mat. Don't you get one of these in, in there? You, you do, do. Okay. yeah. And then you've got a high tack. So if you're using thicker material, so glitter vinyl, mm -hmm. you would stick the glitter vinyl on there because um, it's got... Okay. Um, and this one is, that's the high tack one. Yeah, it's a strong tack on it. Strong yeah. tack, yeah. There is different ones. So we've got the silhouette, um, brand we've got yeah. the color and shape brand they're all cutting mats that can fit the the cameo four and there are others that wouldn't fit on on the table mm -hmm. but these are just exactly the same just a different size yeah and these are used for smaller machines i'm yes. guessing like yeah. the portrait the portrait is do you want to tell everybody a little bit about the portrait because yeah. we may well be introducing that very soon okay yeah so the portrait three um is just a smaller machine it's just an eight inch machine compared to the 12 inch okay um, it's got one tool carriage in it, um, takes the, the standard blades, the auto detect blade, mm -hmm. one mil, two mil blades. Um, it's just more of your desktop machine. So yeah. you can, it's, it's small enough, you know, put in your bag. You can go, you know, to the supermarket if you want to go to the supermarket with it. You never know. <laughs> um, do, a bit, do a bit of weeding out. <laughs> um, but it's, yeah, it's just a, a smaller model compared to the, the Cameo 4. So it wouldn't have the same pressure as this. The no. Cameo 4 just has more. It's more it can powerful. Do more. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So. But with the smaller cut mats, you can feed them into the Cameo 4. Yeah you've got that flexibility as yeah. well. Whereas yeah. the other way around, you wouldn't fit Obviously the, the, the Cameo 4s yeah. yeah. into the Portrait 3. So are you going to show us something with one of them? Yes, yeah, so I've got some off-cut material here. Okay. So if I just take that, put that there. Okay, let's move this out of the way. Yeah, let's get some space. So yeah, as you mentioned before, the, this cut mark, the standard tack, does come in the box with the Cameo 4. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. So you have got your grids, you have got the arrows there to show you which direction you can you put yeah. it into the machine. Okay. You have this layer here, which just um, protects the mat from any bits and bobs. So any dust and stuff like that. Yeah. And you can feel it has got a slight tack to it. Oh yeah. Then what you would do is you would get your off cut material, stick it onto Make sure it's nice and flat. You mm -hmm. don't want any bumps, any gaps. And then you would then load that into the Cameo. Load it in and that's ready to go. Okay. You would then send the job through and it will perform the cut to the size of the media that you've yeah. You set it to, yeah. So do you have to, like, you've got this little edge that you've left around the edge. Do you have to tell the software that that's there or does it detect that? No. So wherever you position the job um, in the software, you have um, a like for like view. Oh, I see. So you would have in the software, you would have a grid. Um, and then wherever you've positioned that job on that grid, it would then perform the cut from that position. Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah. 
Um, I Have know. You got more? I was, was going to finish off then. What, what, what are you going to show us no, now? No, no. Means we're um, we're talking about blades earlier on. Um, we do get a few questions. Um, I don't know about yourself about you know if your blade's not detected. Mm -hmm. So might be some here. I might as well talk Absolutely. you through it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Tell, 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 tell us about some things that might. So um, sometimes with the when you're loading up your blade, mm -hmm. you need to make sure that the blade all the way into the um, into the tool carriage. You need to make sure it's all pressed in all the way and clipped in properly. So do people get an error message or does it just not work? What, what? In the software, it won't read a blade. Okay. Um, it won't send a job through because it's not secure in there. It's not picking up the, the sensor. So you do need to make sure the blade's pushed all the way in and it is clipped in. Okay. Um, and you can see as well that compared to one's Mm -hmm. Number two, there's, it's not been pushed in. Number one has. You'd see that colour. Yeah. So you, that would just, you know, let you know that it, it has been pushed in. Cool. Um, you'd want to make sure as well um, that the area is clear. You've got nothing in the way. If you are, you know, working with fabric, you can have like little bits and pieces that which could be covering the surface of where the blade's trying to cut. Okay. That could stop the performance. Um, also from the rear of the machine as well, um, there is a cross cutter, so you mm -hmm. need to make sure that's tucked away. Okay. If the material is feeding in and out, um, if you've got something there stopping it, it will, you know, struggle trying yeah. to, you know, go back and forth. So yeah, you just yeah, want to make sure yeah. that area is all, all clean. Okay. Um, and then just make sure the material um, is on these pinch rollers here. Yeah. Um, but you can move them with this lock in. So you've got arrows to guide you the positions where mm -hmm. these rollers can be. So you want to make sure that they're in line. Um, and also you've got this um, down as well yeah. to add the pressure. And if yeah. that's not down, then the material then could lift. Just go all over the place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so you want to make sure you've got all of those in I've, place. I've done that myself when we got our cameo too many years ago. Wow. And <laughs> forgot to, to put the thing down. It just... just yeah, skewed. Yeah, and, it was yeah. really messy. So. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Is that it? I think so. Sure. Okay, <laughs> so. brilliant. <laughs> Ellen, thank you so much for that. No, thank you. Now, I, I totally forgot to prep you for this, but you've got to ask a question of the week to of everybody course. out there. <laughs> so have you got a question of the week for everybody out there watching? Um, means we're coming up to like the festive season. Mm -hmm. What's everyone's favourite time of year? Is it Halloween? Oh, Is excellent. it Christmas? Um, Easter? What's everyone's favourite time of year? Favourite time of year? Leave your comments down below on Facebook and on YouTube and any questions you might have for us and Ellen to answer, right? Well, thank you so much thank for you. that. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you've not subscribed, please do, and hit the little bell icon at the same time, and that way you'll be notified every time we upload a new show. And whilst you're there, give us a follow on Instagram. Nearly forgot what it was. Instagram, there you go. <laughs> right, take care. See you next week. Bye. Bye, thank you. <laughs>